Welcome again. This is lesson three, and we are going to learn how to set up the menu of the camera before starting working. Have you ever wondered which format to use? JBG, RAW, how am I supposed to set it up? Are the settings configured by default? If you have all these doubts, don't worry. Turn on the camera and go to the menu. Depending on the camera, we'll find a screen called quality. Or, in the case of Nikon, for example, we'll find two screens, one for quality and other for size. These tend to be a bit confusing, so we are going to clear them up before starting. What are the basics when using the camera? Well, we are going to work with two finds. The first JBG is the standard and it won't give us any trouble when sharing it or sending it to someone else. The only problem is that it's a file already processed by the camera and it runs at 8 bits, so it stores a smaller amount of data. What does it mean? That it won't be that useful when editing the photo. The second fine format is RAW, and its main characteristic is that it hasn't been compressed. But before using this format, we need to make sure that we know how to process RAW files. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend you to work with it until you get it. to know it better. Obviously, if we are ready to get started with RAW, the results will be great once we master it. That is, while the JPG is already adjusted, in the case of RAW, it only captures information related to light. So, through the diaphragm and ISO speed, we just get the basic information, which we'll be editing with the photo editor. In fact, I suggest you to have a look at the course on RAW processing, which teaches us how to work with this fine format. So, guys, for the moment, let's begin with JBG to make things easier, where we are learning how to take advantage of our camera, how to use the different options, controlling the range of motion, the white balance, and so on. Remember that JBG files are already finished, which is an advantage and also a problem since the file is already compressed and it comes with default settings such as contrast, saturation or definition, which we are going to learn about later. As I was saying, we're going to configure the settings in the camera, but we won't be able to change them afterwards. What else do we need to know? That there are two important elements image size and image quality. Depending on the camera we are using, they are going to appear in the same screen or in different screens. So just have a look to check where they are in your camera. Let's talk about size, which is quite easy. Have you ever bought a t-shirt or a pair of trousers? Well, it's pretty much the same. We are going to find different sizes. So we can say if we want to take photos with a big size, a medium size or a smaller one. So you can see right here the large size option allows us to take pictures of 24 million pixels. Normally, it's the manufacturer who specifies the height and width in pixels. For example, let's see a medium size, which has 11 million pixels, and then the small size with 5.9 million pixels. All this means, basically, that size refers to the height and width of the picture of a printed image. It's important to remember this, since in case the photo is on the screen or it's a little photo, we can't adjust it to any other size. Imagine we want to use the photos for a familiar photo album. In this case, we'll use a small size or even a medium size. But if we have no idea what we are using our photos for, I recommend you to use a large size. For example, let's say you want to have a printed copy of the amazing holidays you had last summer. The systems, the bigger the amount of pixels we have, the better. All this information refers to the size of the file which, at the end of the day, is also connected to its weight and the amount of space it takes up on the memory card and on our computer. Now I'm going to talk about image quality, which is very important, so check it out. As you can see, Canon's nomenclature uses this curvy shape and this other staggered shape, while other brands prefer using the following classification, fine, standard and basic. If I were you, I wouldn't use that basic quality options, and I would make sure that the camera is adjusted to a higher quality. What does quality mean? Well, 
It's true that quality depends on different factors such as the sensor, the lens, etc. However, when we're we are just in the quality in the menu, we are referring to the range of colors of the photo. That's why if we select a fine quality, it gives us a wide variety of tones to work with and we'll be able to create complex transitions like making a gradient of the sky at task or any other picture with a gradual change of colors. Let's say we take the same picture with a basic quality. In the systems, the change of colors is going to be more perceptible and it's going to appear small discontinuities between colors. Can you see them? That's why in terms of quality, I always recommend the fine option. And in terms of size, it's on you. It just depends on your necessities. Although it's true that large size is better. But don't forget that these quality options only have to do with JPG files, since raw files, as I said before, offer the highest quality in our camera. So keep in mind the following. Don't start using raw until we control our camera. And now it's your turn. Adjust your camera to find quality and large size and get ready for taking photos. See you in the next lesson where we'll be learning how to measure light and adjust the light meter.